Hello and happy Sunday, everybody. Yes, hello and happy Sunday. I have on my hello and happy Sunday shirt that Casey made for me. This is Kelly with ifyouhaveanegg.com and today is Sunday, April the 4th and it is also Easter. So I am going to catch up with you all and turn my volume down. Here we go. So hello and happy Sunday, everybody. Oh, come on. Let me see it. Let me see it. Come on. There we go. Okay, so I'm catching up with everybody. Um, this is Sunday, April the 4th, and it is Easter. So happy Easter, everyone um, who celebrates. Um, hopefully we'll be able to see comments tonight. And there we go. There is Carol. Hello, Carol. It is good to see you. Um, it is Easter Sunday. Um, I hope everybody had a great day. I hope it was as beautiful as it was here in East Tennessee, here in Knoxville. Absolutely gorgeous day. So we had a fabulous weekend after a long time of a lot of rain. Yeah, so we had a lot of rain last week, but a beautiful weekend this weekend. Hello, John from Home Base. It is good to see you as always. I um, mean, you don't look a day older than you did last week. Not a day older. Yeah, who would have thunk? Um, hello, Orlando Debbie. It is good to see you. Hello, Linda from Rock Island, Illinois. And thank you for not just saying Rock Island, so I got confused this week. Y'all know how easy that is. Hello, Irma. Hello, Deborah from Virginia. Hello, Lynn. Um, and we had somebody over on Facebook that was concerned about being able to find us. So hopefully you found us and you will let me know. Hello, Betty Ann and hello, Mary Ann from Pennsylvania. Um, speaking of which, if you are brand new, please do let us know. Hello, Elaine. Happy Easter. So if you're brand new, please let us know. Hello, Vicki from St. Louis. We would love to welcome you, especially on this special day. And when I'm, I'm just thrilled that you all are even here. Hello, Kathy from Ohio. And she said, Ohio was beautiful today. Hello, Lisa from Arkansas. Hello, Terry from Connecticut. Um, I, I can't believe y'all are here. So first of all, thank you for that. Um, and again, happy Sunday. Hello, Bernice from Northeast um, Texas. Uh, yeah, just thank you all for being here. So this is this is so special that you all decided to join us tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello, Rosie. Uh, but again, if you are brand new, please let us know that you're brand new. Just say, hi, I am fill in the blank with your name and let us know that you are brand new so that we can welcome you and let's see we've got Carol from Surrey and I've got, I'm, I'm getting notifications on two different things hello Sherry from Connecticut yep it is super good to see you all so hello Sandra from Dingman's Ferry happy Easter so happy Easter everyone and Debbie just got home so Debbie I'm sure you just got home from hunting eggs yourself correct am I correct mm -hmm. yeah or did you take primera egg hunting because I'm telling you Dusty was egg hunting yesterday. Yeah, he wanted all the eggs because we made real eggs. Hello, Mary from Ontario, Canada. Yeah, so we made, you know, actual eggs and we made the mistake of giving him one of them after we peeled it. Hello, Trish. I know it was, yep, yeah, of course we're on today. Um, and hello, Joyce from New Orleans. Um, but Dusty was all about it. After he had the first hard boiled egg, then every time Alyssa tried to hide the eggs yesterday, he was all over them. Hello, Sherry. And I'll just sidetrack real quick and say, oh, well, hold on a second. Kathy is new and she is from Oregon and it's Kathy, K-A-T-H-Y. So everybody welcome brand new Kathy from Oregon. Everybody tell her hello. Hello, Connie. Um, he and Debbie didn't go egg hunting. She went to the beach. That's better. That's better than egg hunting. Hello, Tag. Um, but Alyssa was hilarious. Hello, Marlene from Florida. So this was the first year. She's three. This is the first year, and hello Sherry from uh, Perrysburg. This is the first year that she had a clue what was going on, but she was so funny because she kept saying, my turn, and she would take all the eggs, hide them, like in one place, and then go find them, found them, you know, and then she found them all. Anyway, it was just hilarious. Yeah, it was too funny. Okay, so this is Sunday, April the 4th. It is Easter Sunday. Hello, everyone. Hi, and happy Sunday. Um, again, if you are brand new like Kathy is, please just let us know because we would let, you can see everybody is welcoming Kathy. So everybody here is super, super friendly. So do not be afraid to let us know if you are brand new. Um, a little bit of news today. There were no Zoom meetings today. No WW Zoom meetings today because it's Easter Sunday. Oh, and Debbie, it says my shirt. Say, Debbie says, what does your shirt say? It says, and I'm going the wrong direction. It says, hello and happy Sunday. Casey made this for me and it is available on our spread shirt. So at the end of this, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, there is a, if you're on YouTube, there is a spot over here that you can click on and go to our spread shirt. And it's not spread sheet, it's spread shirt. Hello, Rita. Um, link, you can go to that spread shirt link and all of the logos and things that Casey has made, you can get those on t-shirts or water bottles, you know, things like that. Okay, so back to news, there were no Zoom meetings and hello Carolyn from Long Island. There were no Zoom meetings, WW Zoom meetings today because it is Easter Sunday. So 
I didn't get to see any of y'all. So at our normal, um, hello Sandy from Northeastern Kansas. So our normal 2.30 Zoom meeting here in Knoxville, I didn't get to see anybody. Oh, and Marlene has one of these. Yay, Marlene, that makes me happy. Um, we didn't get to have one. So I, did, I have not already seen some of you. So normally I rattle down a list of people that I've already seen for the day. Have not. Oh, wait, wait, wait. And Carol gave Peanut her first peep today and she loved it. That is so funny. And hello, Roberta. That is hilarious. Okay, but I do have a little bit of news for East Tennessee girls, middle and East Tennessee girls, and we are in a franchise location. So a little update on our in-person workshops. And I'm just talking to the middle and East Tennessee girls right now. I only have one update on that. So we didn't get any in or live updates today on the zoom meeting because there wasn't a zoom meeting due to easter but the one update i have is <clears throat> on the workshops for knoxville um, they do start saturday april the 17th we will be meeting at the kingston pike location so it's down in cedar bluff if you're from knoxville you know where i'm talking about i only have information on knoxville i do not have information on um, middle or middle tennessee or any of the other areas yet just knoxville Saturday, April the 17th is the first day that we were back in person. Um, and those will be, let's see, on that Saturday, uh, April the 17th, those will be with Cheryl M. She will be uh, leading us that day. Her workshops are at 8 and 9.30 on Saturday, April the 17th. I will warn you, that's when the meeting starts. So that's when the actual workshop starts at 8 and at 9.30. So if you want time to weigh in, chit-chat, check in you know because it, it's been a while since we've all seen each other so if you want to do that you need to be there about 30 minutes early so they'll open the doors about 30 minutes before that to let you in um and um and rosie i don't know because i'll just be honest i don't know cheryl m i don't know her so maybe i'm gonna have to get gwen's opinion of course gwen's gonna say she's fabulous because she thinks everybody's fabulous but maybe and actually saturday morning at eight would be the perfect time for me to go right now and it's not too far from Casey Kitchen Center. So I don't know, that may work out. I may I may check it out. But anyway, so go a little bit early. If you go early though, go early enough to make sure that you get in. Hello, Sandy, to make sure that you get in um, because they will be limiting the seating and that is for Knoxville girls only or if you're coming from another area to, you know, into Knoxville. So that's Saturday, April the 17th. Uh, the workshop starts at eight and another one starts at 9.30. Um, remember that's what time the workshop starts that's not what time you can start checking in you want to be in line then the next one is Monday April the 19th um, and that is with Gwen so that is with my Gwen um, that's gonna be super hard for me to attend and I'm really bummed about that because I have Alyssa on Mondays hello Verna and as much as I love Gwen I love Alyssa more so Probably not going to be able to make it to the Monday afternoon ones, but Monday, April the 19th will be the first in-person workshop back with Gwen, and that will be at 12.15, so you can start checking in at 11.45, and that is, again, is at the Kingston Park location down in Cedar Bluff, and then the next one is on Thursday, April the 22nd, and there will be one in-person workshop with Sandy P, and it will start at, I don't know what time, because I didn't write it down. Way to go, Kelly. Anyway. Okay, I'll figure it out. Hello, Debbie, Deborah. So by the time Jessica posts these notes, so um, everybody that's been here a few times knows that Jessica, um, hold on, aloha, Kathy, knows that Jessica, po so Casey posts the YouTube videos like the day after, um, and then uh, Jessica gets the chat, the notes posted as quickly as she can, depending on how cooperative I am. You know, because she still depends on me to give her some of the information before she can do it. And hello, Madeline. So Debbie wants to know if the 2.30 Zoom meetings with Gwen will continue. Yes, until her Zoom until her Zoom is replaced with an in-person workshop. So she that was actually her workshop time, her normal workshop time in Cedar Bluff on Sundays. So until it's replaced with an in-person workshop, those should continue. And I have been promised that even, even at that, that we'll get a couple of week heads up before those Zooms end. Okay. So again, um, this is just for middle and East Tennessee girls and especially for Knoxville girls. So yeah, so we will continue those 2.30 Zoom meetings. The only reason we didn't have one today is because it is Easter. Okay, so as I get more information on that, I will let everyone know. Um, and for those of you who are already in areas where you're sitting your bottoms in little chairs, you already knew that anyway. Okay, and for those of you who are in areas where you just don't have a physical workshop anymore, your workshops are canceled, and sadly, there are areas like that in the country where like all of your workshops have been canceled, and that makes me so sad 
do not forget, you still have um, opportunities to do Zoom meetings, um, Zoom workshops online. Um, you do still have opportunities to come. Of course, you can come here every Sunday. I mean, it's Easter and I'm here. So I think I've only missed like, I don't know, four, maybe. Four in three years, three and a half years. I think I've only missed like four or five of these. Um, and I will just go ahead and say if Pistachio decides to show up on a Sunday, it's going to be the fifth one that I miss. Okay. So, okay, so that's all, all the news that I know about the Knoxville workshops for right now. Um, and you can still go to WW um, to connect and you can check out, you know, meeting locations in your area, you know, and see if there is one available. Um, to find a wellness check-in, you just go to WW, go to connect. And then to find hours, you go, like you would go to Kingston Pike, you would type in Knoxville. So that's, you know, kind of how you find them. There are also um, other opportunities to attend workshops by coaches who, that's all they do. That's that's what they do is online workshops. And that's Barbara, it's good to see you. Um, if you need some more information on WW, um, WW Plus, so on my WW Plus, so if you're just starting WW or, you know, if COVID just like, blew your whole year, which it did for a whole lot of us, and you just need to catch back up again. I noticed on the desktop version today that you can, if you actually log on, and it's, I didn't find it on the phone, on the, um, on the mobile version, but if you actually get on the desktop version and log in, you can go to my WW Plus at the top, and it was actually uh, italicized a little bit, which is, I think, why I noticed it, but you can go there um, after you log in and click on the my WW Plus icon, and um, then click on the starter guide. So there's three or four little things, um, you know, when you first click onto that, um, and you can go to the starter guide, and then it has things like, um, it has uh, everything you need to know about blue, green, and purple, um, and uh, you can even print off a tracker. So if you, if you like writing things down, you can even go there and print off a paper tracker. Okay, so that was some news. Um, we will um, have another Zoom workshop next Sunday. Um, so they'll be, they'll be back in sync again next Sunday again, just, just because of Easter, you know, was the only reason we didn't have one this week. So I'm gonna let y'all off the hook last week since we didn't, or next week, since we didn't have a Zoom today, but who last week, so who this past week got to sit your bottom in a little chair, give me a thumbs up. So if you are doing this um, live with us tonight, Sunday, April the 4th, and if you got to sit your bottom in a little chair at a workshop, if you're on a phone or on a tablet, there's a little button at the bottom that, um, oh my gosh, and Linda, now Linda's calling it her flabby bottom. She says, I had my flabby bottom in a chair again. Was it a green chair? Was it? Just kidding. I'm sure your bottom's not flabby. Um, but anyway, so give me a thumbs up. And that is in the bottom right hand corner. I did not attend a physical workshop, but I'm going to click that. Or if you attended a Zoom meeting, which I did last week, I attended a Zoom meeting. So I'm going to do a thumbs up, but you can do a thumbs up for that. If you're watching this later on YouTube, it's just youtube.com. Search if you have an egg. You can just do a thumb emoji like Barbara just did a thumb emoji. That's perfectly fine. That's acceptable. We love it. Okay. Or if you attended here with us live last week or watched it on demand on replay, give us some hearts. I was here, so I'm still going to give a heart. So I kind of have to be here. I don't know, one day, and yes, it was a green chair, and no, whatever, Linda, it's not flabby. Um, someday, I should have a substitute and just see what you all do. Hmm, that's an interesting thought. Okay, so thumbs ups and hearts for people who went to physical workshops, Zoom workshops, attended here with us live last week, or did both. So awesome, awesome, and it was the week before Easter, so it'll be interesting to see how many of you all do it this week after Easter, um, but here are your Bravo stickers, everyone, so for everyone who attended one of those things, Bravo, and if you didn't, don't worry about it. This is a new week. You can you can start again this week. So last week was chat number 217, and it was entitled, What's Your Superpower? And so we discovered last week that some of the things, some things that you're already really good at could make your WW journey, your, your weight loss and wellness journey, might be able to make, you know, might actually make it easier because you're already good at it. So, um, you know, and these are simple things. They're simple things like being smart, like being creative, like being, um, willing to do something, you know, being willing can be, you know, could be a superpower. So last week we were talking about how to, you know, kind of tap into those so that you can use your superpower when you've had a hiccup, when you need a little extra help, and um, you know, just when you need something, because you can use your superpower for yourself also. So you were going to check with a friend and see what they would say if you asked them the question, you know, I call, you know, Kelly if I need blank, if I need someone who is blank, or I call, 
you know, so-and-so if I need somebody who is, you know, whatever that power is. And then um, think about a time when you actually use that trait and that, that did not have to be weight, you know, weight loss related. Um, and then make a statement and say, you know, you know what, I really am fill in the blank, whatever that blank was, and then write it down, um, mark it down, take a picture of it, you know, do something so that you can keep reminding yourself. So your homework for last week's chat was hashtag what's your superpower, and you were to write that down um, or top it out, you know, e you know, either one you could do that, and you were gonna, you know, tag me in it so that you could get your next cool badge, and the badge last week was like, bam, so it was definitely a superpower. So let's see who did their homework. A lot of y'all did your homework at the last minute. I'm gonna say y'all must have been really super busy last week because a lot, a lot of the oh well, Irma, that's very sweet. Irma says you're the most positive person. That's why I love your channel. Okay, that's very sweet. But anyway, thank you, thank you. Um, but um, a lot of y'all did your homework last minute. Just gonna say, like you snuck in right under the wire. Um, but let's see how you did. So Lynn's superpower, I think we had already identified, like, I'm not kidding, I think we had had identified it already like six times last week, but I still wanted to go ahead and mention it again. Oh, Barbara, and you know, I didn't even know, Barbara, I just noticed you did forget to do your homework. You can still do it. Um, but Lynn's superpower is encouragement. So an encourager or encouragement. So Lynn always, she, you know, like Gwen says, um, so, I'm sorry, Gwen, Lynn, Lynn, Sorry, Lynn is such an encourager. She posts something almost every single day. Her and Karen Hapka both post something almost every single day on the If You Have an Egg group. Um, and Lynn's are so, I don't even know where y'all find these things. So they are, everything that Lynn posts is so uplifting and so motivating and encouraging. And hello, Vicky, happy Easter. Um, but like Gwen says, it's hard to shine a lot on someone else's path without shining a little on your own. So every time Lynn is shining a light on someone else's path when she shares that, she's shining a little bit on her own. So I think that's an excellent superpower. Sylvia's superpower is dependability. So others can count on her to be there um, when, you know, when they need, when they, when they need her, they can count on her to be there. So she can depend on herself to do the next right thing on her own journey. I think that was another great one. And then finally, Carol Lou's super, superpower is optimism. She is always, always optimistic, optimistic and being a great grandma. That's also her superpower. Um, but you can bet that her practice in talking other people off the ceiling and off of a ledge comes in handy, has come in handy a time or two for herself. So bravo to everyone who did your homework. Y'all get some extra Bravo stickers today. And if you want um, Bravo stickers that you can download yourself, you can go to ifyouhaveanegg.com and they are under the shopping section and then printable download. So you can print them off, you know, yourself if you need them. Okay, this week, this week, our topic is temptation bundling. So without cheating, if you went to a Zoom meeting last week or if you went to a physical workshop, you already know, you should, you should already know what temptation bundling is, but is there anyone who did not attend a physical workshop or a Zoom meeting and wants to guess what temptation bundling is? Because every time Gwen says this, I, I don't know, it just makes me giggle because, I don't know, it's just, it just seems like such a weird term, but it makes sense when you know what it is. So I'm gonna take a sip of my water and give y'all just a second to answer. Did you notice the Bradford pears are just about done blooming? So I'm so much better today and the rain really helped to knock that down. So that's one reason I appreciate the rain is to knock down the Bradford pears. Okay, so not a lot of answers on the temptation bundling. So temptation bundling is simply this. It's simply this. It's pairing something that you love to do with something that you should do, but you don't really want to. So, you know, so kind of how does that work? In a non weight loss related example, um, you know, then this has nothing to do with weight loss, but this is pairing something that you love to do with something that you should do, but you really don't want to do. Okay. So, um, so I'm going to think of something that is non weight related. Okay. So like, I can't stand to clean. I can't stand to clean. I can't stand it. Cannot stand it. I'm a wonderful cleaner, house cleaner at someone else's house. Don't know what it, I don't, don't, don't know what's up with that. Have no idea. And Debbie, I'll tell you what it is in just a second, but I have no idea why I cannot stand to clean at my own house. So, you know, if you need me, 
I'm happy to come help you clean your house. Happy to. And I can actually do a decent job, but I hate cleaning at my own house. Like, yuck, don't make me. I'd rather do anything. I'd rather mow your yard. I'd rather mow the yard than to clean. Just can't stand it. But, I, and, but I should clean. Okay, but I love music. Love it. Loud, eardrum popping, you know, drive your neighbors crazy music. Love it. Um, so when I do have to clean, when it's my turn, um, I just pop in my headphones, turn them up probably a little bit too loud, um, and then I sing at the top of my lungs and just hope that my neighbors don't care. You know, and right now we have neighbors on one side that are hardly ever there and the unit on the other side of us is unoccupied. So, hmm, I guess I better put my headphones in and get to cleaning while those two units are empty. Okay, but that's an example of temptation bundling. So what, so what do you do in your weight loss journey? So you're going to make a list of things that you should do. And I just pick like no more than three things, you know, like, like make a list of, no, uh, seriously, no more than three. You can just make it a list of one if you want to, but let's not get carried away. So the should do list shouldn't be that I should make a 10 item list. That's not what we're talking about. One, two, maybe three items. Um, make that list of things that you know you really should be doing, um, but you're just having a hard time getting started or you're just having a hard time doing them. Um, then make a list of one to three things that you love to do that have nothing to do with the first two or three things that you just wrote down. So make that list of things that you love to do and then pair them up. So find a couple of things that you love, you know, that you, that, you know, something that you love that you can pair up with one of the things that you should be doing, but you just haven't figured out how to pair it, you know, together yet. Um, like I know that I should be walking more. So, and I love talking to my friend, Karen. So I, we have paired those. So on the days that Karen and I don't want to, we don't feel like walking, but we know we should, you know, because we've got to get back at this from, um, hello Loretta and happy Easter. So, um, you know, we, we both know we've got to get back at this because that was a 25 year habit, but we love that time together um, talking, you know, without husbands talking, without other people interjecting anything. It's just me and her. So that's temptation bundling as we bundle that love of walking together um, with something that we you know that we should do and tracking. Okay, so Carol just said another one of mine. I know I should track better, but she loves to eat. Okay, so if you love to eat, then maybe you should write down some things that you love to eat and go ahead and pre-track them. What do you think? What you think about that? So you could use temptation bundling to go ahead, you know, and figure out what are some things that you love to eat, and then pre-track them in your week and say, okay, I love pizza, so I'm gonna have pizza on Wednesday night, and go ahead and track it Wednesday night. So you're doing something that you love, and you're um you know, pairing with something that you should do. And Loretta, I'm trying really hard to get back on track. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so that is temptation bundling. And your homework for this week is going to be hashtag temptation bundling. So, you know, you guessed it. What I'm gonna want you to do this week is I'm gonna want you to write down, and I love, I do love it when you all write stuff down, um, especially if you put little stickers on it or something, you know, it just makes me so excited. If you write things down, and then snap a little picture of it. And it doesn't have to be fancy. It can be on a note card, on a post-it note, something. You can even you could even write down the three things that you should do, and then write down three things um, that you love. And you could just draw a little line, you know, from them to see if you can get a couple of them to connect. But that is going to be your homework for this week. And if you are brand new, you have homework every single week. Um, there are no hall passes. You can't get out of it. I'm just kidding. You don't have to. You don't have to. But. We do have fun with it and you get a super cool little badge um, when you do your homework. So Casey makes us a super cool badge every single week and they are so much fun. Um, but so this week's homework is hashtag temptation bundling. And um, you're gonna do, so what you're gonna do is pick one of your should do's and one of your love to do's. Oh, hold on a second. Hello Tahira, it's good to see you. So Loretta says her friend just started, oh no, 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 not me, not Nutrisystem. Mm -mm, no, don't do it, Loretta. <clears throat> it's not real, it's, mm -mm, no. Anyway, thank you for sharing that, Carol Lou. So it is hashtag temptation bundling. And um, so you're gonna pick one of your should do items and you're gonna, then you're gonna pick one of your love to do items and pair them together and tell us what you're gonna do. So maybe it is, you know, well, like when Casey and I used to be able to go to um, Planet Fitness, I really, really, really did not like the elliptical. 
Um, but Casey talked me into trying it. And so how we, what we did for temptation bundling was I loved spending time with Casey and I loved watching Midsummer Murders. That was the summer of uh, Midsummer Murders for me. So she, so my love of spending time with Casey got me to Planet Fitness and got me on the elliptical. And then my love of Midsummer Murders kept me on it. So I think when COVID hit, I think we were up to, if I'm not mistaken, I think Casey, I think I, I want to say I was up to like 40, 45 minutes on the elliptical, which is crazy because the first time we did it, I did like five and said, I'm going to die. I'm out of here. Okay. So anyway, so that is, hash, that is hashtag um, temptation bundling. So go ahead and do your homework. You can do it now and I'll see it. Um, you can do it later and you can tag me in it if it's on um, on Instagram. It's just at if you have an egg. If it is here in the public Facebook um, page, um, you can just type it and I'll get a notification or um, <laughs> and Debbie, okay, so we were, sorry, we sidetracked just a little bit, um, talking about another weight loss program, which comes in boxes. Yeah. So Debbie said, um, I could not do a lifetime of boxed foods for the rest of my life. Not going to happen. Yeah. I totally agree. So yeah, been there, done that. Mm -mm, not, you know, I use that as an, as an emergency backup food. Okay. So we're not going to sidetrack onto that or I will talk us into oblivion tonight and it is Easter and I would like to get home at some point. So um, people who are new, do your homework. People who are not due, do your homework. It's hashtag temptation bundling. Tag me in all the appropriate places. Um, I really do want you to do it. Really, really do want you to do your homework. I'm sure Casey will come up with something super fun and super cute for us. Um, and you can't get your badge unless you do your homework. So brand new people. We are at about the halfway point. We have actually arrived there just a little bit early, just a couple of minutes early. Um, because again, you know, it's Easter and I would like to get home before midnight, <laughs> you know, tonight. So new people we are going to drink our water so at the halfway point um everybody's going to stop and get a drink and yep sandra's exactly right it is time for some water oh and debbie asked what this was so i had frozen strawberries that were really not going to be good much longer so i went ahead and put the frozen strawberries in with my spring water and then this is raspberry, I think it's raspberry, yeah, Jordan Skinny Syrups, and it is raspberry flavored. So the raspberry with the strawberries is delicious. So everybody go ahead and get your water. Yes, Barbara, it is time for water. <clears throat> everybody go ahead and get a sip of your water. <laughs> okay, and we are ready for the second half. <clears throat> what we are making for the second half oh and dusty just stood up he thinks it's time to go it is not time to go buddy you can sit down so what we're making for the second half could get a little messy so even though i have on a black shirt i'm going to go ahead and put my apron on this is these are also available on um on our spread shirt you know in case you wanted an apron and rosie is the one that convinced me to get this so thank you again rosie okay so who had easter today Raise your hand if it was Easter at your house today. So as parts of the country are starting to open back up again, um, people are starting to be able, you know, to visit and do things again. So we had Easter yesterday and, um, and yes, Trish, it is water time. So we had Easter and I'm a little bit crooked here. Let me see if I can, hold on. Oop, wrong side. Okay. So we had, um, so we had Easter yesterday. So Sherry's having Easter today. Um, <clears throat> but we had Easter yesterday, and Alyssa is three. Whew. So everything is sort of new. It's, or maybe she's just aware now. So um, so in the second half of tonight's chat, so the first half of tonight's chat, we were talking about temptation bundling. Um, but in the second half of tonight's chat, we are going to be talking about what to do with all of these leftover eggs. So I don't know if you follow me on Instagram or not. It is just if you have an egg. But on Instagram... And I may have posted it in the Facebook group too. Um, I posted a picture of the eggs that I actually let Alyssa hide. So I wish I could say that I had come up with some creative way. It looks like a lot of y'all had Easter today. I wish I could say that I came up with a creative way to make a crackle looked egg, but they were really that cracked. So she had the best time. Her hands, and I'll just have to ask Casey, I don't know. Her hands, like her fingernails were 
covered in the color because she kept, she was using the little uh, metal thing, but then she kept sticking her hands in there, you know, and taking it out. And this one arm was blue all the way down. It was blue all the way down. So hopefully that got a little cleaned up because, you know, Nona just let her go. But she was hiding the eggs and she, well, first we hid them and then we made her mom look for it. For, well, her mom hid them and then we had Alyssa go find them. Then we had, um, then we had Alyssa hide them and made her mom go look for them. Well, then Alyssa was just like, it's my turn. It's my turn. It's my turn. And then it was her turn the rest of the night. So she kept going and hiding them um, and then finding them again where she had just hid them. So those eggs were destroyed. So these are the eggs that I salvaged. These are the ones that did not get destroyed. So people have been naming things like egg salad. That's exactly right. Loretta says egg salad. Um, let's see. Um, Loretta, yeah. Uh, Loretta says egg salad or tuna salad. Debbie says uh, deviled eggs, egg salad. So yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking too. But we're gonna do something a little, a little different. Uh oh. And Lynn had her second COVID vaccine yesterday, so she hasn't felt well today. Oh, Lynn. I know. I heard. I heard it's a bugger. So I'm kind of dreading that. I'm kind of dreading that one. And I'm trying to figure out what would even be a good day to have to get it because there, there's ne there's not a good day for me to be down and out. But anyway, okay. So things like. You know, even if you just wanted to do something like this, um, like, you know, you can get these at Aldi. And this is just a fat-free tuna salad with wheat crackers and a spoon included. And um, these are five, let's see, they're five smart points on green. Um, but you could even chop up one of the eggs and put it in here. But we're not going to do something so boring as that. No, 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 no. So, yeah, deviled eggs too easy, egg salad, mm -mm, too simple, too obvious, you know. So we're going to do something a little more crazy or creative. Okay, so um, those are all the obvious choices, you know, just use them to make, you know, deviled eggs, egg salad, you know, thing, or just in your salad, like Marianne just said, just put them in your salad. Okay, but with my new fascination um, for gardening, fermenting, pickling, canning. So, you know, with gardening, and yeah, Carol is exactly right, Scottish eggs. So, you know, with gardening, you can't consume everything that you had, you know, everything that you've grown in your garden, you can't consume it fast enough unless you have a huge family. You can't consume it fast enough to, you know, to make, to, to consume it before it goes bad. So, before we've even gotten our garden planted, so I've been planning it, I've been drawing it, I've got um, I've got all my little tabs done in my seed book. Um, I've attended a Gardenary University, and yes, that is a Gardenary. So if you want a garden and don't know what to do, I highly recommend Gardenary. It's just like ordinary garden, Gardenary. She blew my mind. I mean, she absolutely blew my mind. Okay, well, we're not going to sidetrack onto that. Okay, so we, and yes, Debbie's, Debbie's right. That's one of the things that we're going to make tonight. So with... My new fascination for all these things. We are going to practice on. We're going to practice on two of the things that I will be doing with garden vegetables. Okay, I will warn you with the legs, legs with the eggs. They're not going to last as long as vegetables will in the same scenario. But we're going to practice on this. So, again, with my new gardening fascination, also has come a fascination for fermenting, pickling, and canning. So I'm not ready for canning yet. Not quite there yet. Um, but we're going to practice on two of these tonight. So, um, what's the difference between pickling and fermenting? Because that's been driving me crazy. And I'm still reading my gardening books that I, that Alyssa and I got from the library. I have not moved on to my pickling and fermenting books yet. So, I just needed a quick example. You know, what is the difference? So, the difference is, according to nutritionyoucanuse.com. So, that's a website called nutritionyoucanuse.com. According to them, there are two basic differences in pickled versus fermented foods. So these are the basic differences. It's two things. It's actually one main thing. The main difference between pickled and fermented foods is how they're made. Okay, okay. So what does that mean? Then they go on to say, with pickling, um, oh, I'm sorry, Betty said, Betty Ann says, my parents have a garden every year after they get what they want. Neighbors and church people get what is left. Okay, well, I'm gonna be stingy and try to pickle, ferment, or can some of mine, then people can have it, okay, after I've done that. Okay, so with pickling, you're immersing the ingredients in something acidic. So, you know, it's going to be like vinegar, vinegar, beet vinegar, you know, something like that. So, um, with pickling, you're immersing the ingredients in something acidic like vinegar, and the process alters the texture and the taste of the food, and it creates kind of that 
you know, you know, pickled sour flavor. Okay, ferment, fermenting does not involve any extra acid, but instead the sour taste comes from the reaction between the compounds in the food and bacteria that are naturally present. Okay, so there is um, fermenting is bacteria for fermenting is different than just leaving your eggs out, letting um, mold and stuff you know grow on them, and then eating them. So that's not what we're talking about. This is this is an actual process, you know, you kind of need to kind of need to pay attention to what you're doing so that you don't end up with, you know, icky food. Okay. So I love the next example that they used in their comparison. So Casey took a class in high school that has fascinated me since then. And it was a logics class and it was called and they were so in this logics class, they were working on a on a thing called syllogism. And I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. But syllogism has fascinated me since that day and I've used the I've used it way too much in normal conversation. I'm confident her teacher did not mean it to be carried, you know, this far, but um so when Casey when they were doing syllogism in high school, um I came to the realization, you know, I don't know just what syllogism is, you know, you just use logical thinking, you know, to to take two facts and see which one both of them are facts, but which one is the is correct, is more correct. So the example that I, you know, one of the examples I like to use is poodles are dogs. So all poodles, every single poodle that there is, is a dog. Everybody can agree with me on that, right? But not all dogs are poodles. Hmm. So think about that. It's a fact that all poodles are dogs, but not all dogs are poodles. So that is an example of syllogism. So the next example that they had on nutrition you can use Kind of, kind of had that same feeling for me. So what they said is fermenting is a type of pickling, but not all pickling is fermenting. So fermenting is the general category. That's the broad category. And pickling is a type of fermenting. But what I'm getting ready to do, the fermenting I'm getting ready to do, that is not necessarily pickling. So my, again, mind blown. It was just, I don't know, it was that same kind of realization for me. So um, pick, pickling is a general term used when foods are preserved using acid to cause a reaction in the food. So we talked about that just a second ago. Um, oh no, Tay missed the, the opening thing. It's okay, you can catch up. Um, so pickling is just a broad term. It's just a broad term that's used when foods are preserved using acid to cause a reaction in the food. Um, but fermenting is also a form of pickling. But instead of using the acid, the food is preserved due to a due to a, a different kind of a chemical reaction that involves the food and bacteria. But it's the good kind of bacteria. So you know, like yogurt has bacteria in it, but it's good. It's good for your gut bacteria. This is that same kind. It's not. I mean, it's not exactly the same as yogurt bacteria, but it is good bacteria like that um, that is also good for your gut. So sauerkraut is fermented. It's not pickled. It's fermented. The fact that it's fermented and it doesn't have an acid that is changing it, so it's bacteria and sauerkraut that are creating that fermentation, you know, process that that the fermentation type of pickling. Then it doesn't lose all of its nutrients. Okay, so instead of something else being added to it, it's just the food and the bacteria making it. Okay, does that does that make sense, or is everybody confused now? So let me know if you're with me or if you're 100% com confused. Because remember, I'm still gonna keep reading up on this because I'm, I'm, it's it's like, I don't know, it's fascinating to me. I don't know, maybe I should have been some kind of a weird scientist or something, but like a food scientist or something maybe. Okay, <clears throat> so again, a quick recap. And I'm not gonna keep rehashing this because I'm actually hoping to finish at about 10 till tonight so that I can head on home since it is Easter. Not that John and I have any big plans, you know, for when I get home, but it'd be nice to go to bed on time. Okay, so again, pickling involves acid. Fermenting does not. Pickling is delicious. I love pickling. I've never pickled anything myself. I'm gonna try, you know, this year because I'm gonna have hopefully lots and lots and lots of vegetables to pickle, but I'm also gonna try fermenting because the fermenting process, since it does not use acid, the acid just it doesn't create that same good for your gut you know bacteria and does that sound like a familiar 
a familiar theme because we've been talking I've been talking about good for your gut bacteria now for what a couple of months so anyway okay so we're going to quickly run through this because I would like to go home at a decent time tonight so for those of you who are not 100% completely lost let's keep talking okay so the first thing I'm going to do because I did not have hours and hours and hours today um pickling is good pickling is good for your joints Loretta pickling or fermenting just asking um because I don't know you're gonna have to tell me so because I do not have did not have time to make all of this um oh wait a minute Myrna says many years ago she made sauerkraut and it was quite an interesting experience yeah so that's what I'm making after this one um is actual just I think that's what I'm gonna make next I don't know we'll see okay so since I did not have time to start from scratch with the pickling the pickling okay well good I'm gonna be I'm gonna be doing something good for my gut. The pickling of the eggs is gonna take um, so once they're pickled, you're gonna leave you're gonna have to put them in the refrigerator. Fermenting is gonna be done in a cool place. So the fermentation process and I'm I'm standing in the wrong direction, but my fermentation pro, pro process is gonna take place in this cabinet um, in a shoe I mean fermentation container. You don't refrigerate it for fermentation. The pickling process will be going into the refrigerator so the pickling it's going to have to go in the refrigerator for at least two to three days um so that it can you know so that the eggs can absorb this taste and remember these are eggs this is not vegetables so this is going to be a shorter time and we're going to have to eat them faster but i've been i've been assured that they are going to be eaten so fast because they're going to be so delicious that this that eating them quickly is not going to be a problem um and lynn you're probably going to have to help me with the pickling part when it is time for me to actually do that because i'm going to need some mentor since my mom's not here okay so for the pickling part i'm cheating and i'm going to use pickled juice there is nothing wrong with using pickle juice there's nothing wrong with using vinegar um there's nothing i mean not, i'm sorry um uh beet you know like pickled beets there's nothing wrong with using juice from a vegetable that is already pickled okay there's nothing wrong with that so i didn't have a lot of time to make i didn't have hours and hours and hours today to make you know my own um pickling stuff plus i had this lovely lovely i already had this pickle juice from my very favorite pickles these are tony paco's sweet hot pickles and they are my very favorite and we had just finished these and it was about time to throw this away and i thought oh no 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 no, not throwing that away I'm gonna use it to pickle my eggs so we're gonna use that here in just a second we're just gonna peel a couple more eggs and if you um just remember if you don't if you're not a successful oh and I forgot to get something to put my eggshells in if you are not a successful um egg peeler or you know like um hold on I forgot to get something to put that in anyway I'll just put it on this if you are not a successful egg hard boiled egg cooker we do already have you know a video for um for how to make hard boiled eggs in the air fryer okay and lynn says she doesn't like pickled eggs at all so i'm hoping i'm hoping that these are going to taste like my um my beloved tony paco's pickles um because i'm going to put them in that pickle juice okay so the eggs that are done in the in the air fryer, I do them in my simple living air fryer. Um, it's better if they're not fresh eggs. So if they've got you know just a little bit of age on them, I mean you know they don't have to be like gross old, but if they can have you know just not super fresh from the store eggs. Um, and I've done white eggs, brown eggs, um, cage free, not cage free, cheap, you know whatever. I've done you know all the eggs, um, the air fryer is the only way I have successfully you know boiled them and gotten them to peel nicely and look so look how nice these peel look how pretty these turn out so it's 260 degrees you put I only put four eggs in there at a time and it's 260 degrees in the simple living products when we realized we figured out uh, yesterday that Casey's what needs to be a little bit lower in heat with the same amount of time so in my simple living products air fryer it's 260 degrees for 16 minutes and then you dump them in an ice bath I mean look look how it's just coming right off and then you dump them in an ice bath and um, for five minutes and they're perfect every single time and I think I can fit 
can probably fit one more in there. So they're they're absolutely perfect every single time. How do you store the hard boiled eggs? Do you leave in the refrigerator with the shells? Okay, so if you're not gonna be doing if you're not gonna be doing anything else with them, then yes, leave them in their shells. Um, go ahead and leave them in their shells, and you can leave them in there for. I try not to leave them in there for more than like a week or so, but if I've hard boiled them, I'm usually gonna eat them pretty quick. And again, I'm only doing four at a time in my Simple Living Products air fryer. Okay, so. There is the last one. We're going to put that in there. And then for the pickled eggs, we're just we're just going to use the already made pickle brine um, from my Tony Paco's Pickles. And we're going to pour that in there. Oops, there's one pickle in there. It had one pickle. It's still got a little bit of the onion. It's got some of the some of the garlic. And I want that other piece of garlic. That one piece of garlic, I want that in there too. Okay, so we're gonna get that put in there. And you wanna make sure that all of the pickles, you wanna make sure that all of the pickles have, um, I'm sorry, all of the eggs, you wanna make sure that all of the eggs are covered in brine. So that was literally just enough. If you had a bigger jar, if you had a bigger jar, you could have put more eggs in there, but that is, Again, what was it, five eggs maybe? Um, in this size mason jar, it's easier if you do a wide mouth jar so that you can get the eggs in there easy, you know, easier. Um, and then you're just gonna make sure that all of the eggs are covered with your pickle juice. So again, you can use pickle juice, you can use um, anything that's already been pickled. So like beet juice, um, if you had like, my dad used to buy pickled cucumbers and pickled uh, carrots and things like that. So you could use the brine from that. This is gonna sit in the refrigerator for two to three days until it tastes until they taste like I want them to, but then they need to be eaten within a couple of weeks. So probably eaten within three weeks, even with the pickling process, just because they're eggs, because you don't want them to get gross. And I've heard that if you, I've heard that even though they're pickled, that the eggs, if you leave them too long, that you'll know. I've heard that you will absolutely know if they've been in there for too long. Okay, so that's the pickling, obviously. I will let you all know as the week progresses, excuse me, how those go. So, and yeah, Barbara, since Barbara already loves pickled beets and that's the perfect thing to pickle these with. Okay, so I asked a couple of you all or asked some of you all earlier if you knew what I was doing with my little flower arrangement that I collected today. And if you didn't see what Dusty and I found when we um, when we went outside and went on our little flower adventure here at Casey Kitchen Center, um, we found, I don't even know what kind of a bush it is, but we found a bush literally, literally covered with bumblebees. Bumblebees that were that big, bumblebees that were big and fat, like the moms and dads, I guess. Um, and I was thrilled because it has been it's been so long since I have seen, um, since I've seen bumblebees. So, um, like last year we had more because we had Cosmos, um, we had planted Cosmos here at Casey Kitchen Center. And so we had more last year, but anyway, so anyway, I was thrilled. So this is, um, just some rosemary that is growing. Uh, somebody had planted it and the bush is huge now here at Casey Kitchen Center. And then these are little wild violas. So I'm going to put those into, I'm gonna put the rosemary, and the rosemary is for flavor. The violas are to be pretty into my pickling jar. I'm sorry, into my fermentation jar. So again, this is a Chu, Chu Ami um, fermentation kit, and it comes with a Le Parfait jar. And then these are the extra accessories for the kit. So you get, this is the, this is the top for it. This is the ring because it's just like a canning ring because this is like a canning jar, but it's a Le Parfait and it's made for this so that they'll specifically fit on there. And then we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. This is the little doohickey we're going to put on the top that's going to form the moat. And then the spring is going to keep the eggs down where they need to be. So we are going to go ahead and put a couple of the eggs in here. And as usual, I'm not going to make my time cut off. So, oh well. Oh, well, I'll just be home when I get home. 
Um, so we're gonna peel a few eggs. So you can do rosemary, you can do um, any kind of herbs. You could do um, garlic, if I had some more fresh garlic. Um, you know, you could do anything like that. Anything that you wanna put in for the flavoring into the fermenting. And actually, um, since these are fermenting, I may put just a little bit of my Dax spices and um, peppercorns in there. Okay. Ooh, uh, Tags made homemade wine before. So you have fermented something. That's exactly the same thing. Good job. That's what Alyssa says. Good job, Tag. And then you have to go, thank you, because that's how you answer her when she tells you you've done a good job. And she's all about the telling, the telling you... Wait, Barbara says, I've never heard of what you do now. What do you mean you've never heard of that? And Trish wants to know if John had a nice birthday. So, yes, this actually, actually where I took him for his birthday or he took himself, us, whatever, for his birthday, what we, what we got to eat has fascinated me in another way. We got um, pizza, because that's John's favorite food group, is pizza. So, we got pizza and it had... Um, buffalo mozzarella, and I forget what else it had on it, but it had fresh jalapenos. They were not pickled jalapenos, and they were absolutely delicious. Oh, it had sriracha chicken. So it was sriracha chick. It was uh, like chicken breast in sriracha, buffalo mozzarella, and fresh jalapenos. Oh, and cilantro, and it was absolutely delicious. So now I want to plant cilantro in a pot in my garden because herbs like that you know kind of take over sometimes so i want to do cilantro in my garden um and i've already added um the jalapenos to to my list of things that i'm going to be growing so yeah so this is super duper a whole lot of fun okay so we've only got just a couple more a couple more eggs and then I'm going to show you how to make the brine for this. I will try to hurry because I know everybody else has got stuff to do tonight too. Or you're winding down. And it's okay if they have, it's okay if they have the coloring, you know, from, from your Easter stuff. So don't worry about that. Should just make them prettier in here. And remember, these eggs are not going to be refrigerated. <clears throat> that terrifies me. And again, fascinates me at the same time. So, you know. Just feels like eggs should be refrigerated but for the fermenting process you don't refrigerate them pickling yes i'm gonna put them in the refrigerator fermenting no okay two more eggs quickly do y'all have any questions while i am getting the last two eggs ready and again if you've never the fermenting though the fermenting oh you've never heard of fermenting so fermentation barbara is what um a couple of people just mentioned wine or beer so uh, how you make wine or making wine or beer that is a fermentation um process sauerkraut is made by fermentation it is not made it's made in huge barrels um and it's made with in a fermentation process instead of um pickling so it's not there's no acid in there it's just bacteria usually salt you don't have to use salt but the salt makes it go faster and um, look at this one didn't that didn't that one turn out pretty I just love the little pattern that's on that one. Okay. Come on, Kelly. We gotta peel some eggs. Okay. And this is the last one. My little colorful pile of Easter egg shells. And remember, you don't have to have to have just had Easter to do this. You can do this any time. Okay. So there is my last egg. So I've got in my shoe I mean um fermenting kit i have a sprig of rosemary i've got some wild violas and um i'm going to okay so now i'm going to make my little brine so the brine that, that we're going to make for this you can um <clears throat> i found a brine chart online that tells you for you know for how many cups it tells you how much salt to add and you want to do um we're using spring water um, because you want to do um, what do they what do distilled or tap water you want to do you know unfiltered water so we're doing um, 
we are doing spring water. Okay, and I'm gonna add to this. So this is two cups of spring water and I'm gonna add a teaspoon of pink Himalayan sea salt. Um, it needs to be a good quality salt. And to that, and look at this, how do I always run us so late? That is the wrong lid there. Oh, yeah, that is the that is the wrong lid there, Kelly. Okay. Pink Himalayan sea salt. And then for some extra gut goodness, I'm gonna add just a teeny, 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 tiny bit of turmeric. I'm gonna add a fourth of a teaspoon of turmeric just because I want to have some of those turmeric benefits, but I don't want it to have that super de duper earthy flavor. Um, and I don't want to turn everything in here bright yellow. So, what is Myrna saying? Myrna is saying, and um, and I realized I didn't bring my whisk. But anyway, Myrna is saying that her son made root beer, um, and it fermented so much that it exploded. <laughs> oh my goodness! And Lynn said their beer exploded. Yeah, yeah. So that's why we're doing it this way with the shoe and me because this process hopefully is going to be less likely to explode okay so i'm just whisking you know i don't have a whisk i'm whisking all of this together and hopefully this is going to be enough brine to cover all of this since now we have like four minutes okay so we're going to pour this over the top yes okay perfect so you do have to have enough to cover up the top so that was a perfect amount a perfect amount and then I'm gonna add the spring to the top. And I'm gonna add the lid. And then on the shoe of me, you release the spring and it's gonna go down. Did you see, could you all see that? How it went down and it's gonna hold that down. So that is going to hold the, um, that's gonna hold the brine down, you know, on the eggs to make sure that the eggs are covered in that. And then for this one to make sure that it stays, um, to make sure that you've sealed out the air properly, I don't know, it's just a funky way to do it, you're gonna fill up this little well with water. And we're gonna let this sit for like, so I'm gonna let this sit in the um, in the cabinet because you wanna put it in a cool, dry place. So I'm gonna let that sit in the cabinet for about three days. And then at the three day mark, I'm gonna check it and just make sure that it's bubbling because the bubbling means that it's fermenting. After, um, after this is done fermenting, the fermented eggs, you need to eat them in like two weeks. So don't, don't leave those in there as long as the, um, as the pickled eggs. So here are the pickled, here are the eggs that are going to be pickling. So these are going to be pickling in the refrigerator. Here are the eggs that are going to be fermenting in, um, in our cabinet. And hopefully here in about three or four days, I will be trying them and letting you all know, um, how they were. But is everybody fascinated now with pickling and ferment and or fermenting? So let me know because I love fun stuff like this and I don't want to bore you all, but I think it's I think it's fascinating. So I'm super excited to be trying these. Um, okay, so I have talked long enough. I've actually talked longer than I had intended to. So I'm gonna go ahead and start winding down, but let me know what you think. If you are reading this on if you have an egg.com, if you have gone over to the um, to the blog, please let me know in the comments what you think. If you were watching this on YouTube, please, please, please let me know what you think. Unless you're gonna say something mean and then just don't comment. I'm just kidding. Everybody's been super nice lately. Um, but I cannot wait to try these. I'm so excited about them. Y'all know I love eggs anyway, because you know if you have an egg, you have hope. So I'm super excited to try these. Um, thank you again so, so much for being here on Easter Sunday evening. I really, really do appreciate it. I know in Carol Luke can't wait either. So I really do appreciate y'all being here. Um, I hope you all had a super blessed day, super, super blessed day. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube, please go ahead and let that next video roll on over. There's like 200 and I don't even know how many of them now um, to watch. And um, you can catch up on all the latest um, or you can go back and watch some that are super old and just watch at how I fumbled through them. But, um, and go ahead and click the subscribe button down here and click that little bell um, so that you can be notified when we have a new video. And if you need anything from our spread shirt shop, spread shirt shop, we do have, they have aprons and you can order whatever you want. So we don't have to stock a bunch of t-shirts and aprons and things. You can order whatever you want whenever you want it. So you all have, again, an amazing and blessed night. Thank you all again so much for being here um, tonight. I will see you next week with some more news and we will have tried these by then. So stay tuned on Instagram and on our Facebook group and I'll let you know how they are. But y'all have a great week. I appreciate you being here and I will see you next time. Good night.